My brothers and sisters in Christ, today we celebrate the feast of St. Ignatius of Loyola, the founding general of the Society of Jesus and the author of the Spiritual Exercises. So happy feast day to all the parishioners of St. Ignatius Church and also to my fellow Jesuits. As some of you already know, Ignatius of Loyola was involved with the Battle of Pamplona, and he's also known for his almost foolhardy defense of the city, even when there was a very little chance of success of keeping the enemy out. I suppose it is understandable given that he had very few options left to him, other than surrendering to the enemy. And Ignatius and his unsuccessful defense of Pamplona got me thinking about forlorn hope. And my friends, do you know what forlorn hope is? What it means? Well, a forlorn hope in military terminology is a band of soldiers in a vanguard position in a frontal attack against the enemy's well-defended position. Basically, they constitute the suicide squad because the casualty rate is very high since they lead the charge into the firing line of the enemy head-on. The forlorn hope are also known as les enfants perdus in French or the lost children. And indeed, they are lost because they participate in a lost cause. In other words, to say forlorn hope is as good as saying hopeless. They act recklessly because of the hopeless situation. The survivors among the forlorn hope will be rewarded handsomely with promotions and money. But of course, the risks are high and the success rate very low. My dear friends, in life do you live like someone with a forlorn hope, taking risks and throwing caution to the wind, even if you do not have to? Or that you are not grounded on reality and make decisions or take actions that are not reasonable, given your situation? And then you claim that such decisions and actions are made because you have faith in the Lord. Well, I think today's Gospel reading offers a very different understanding. In the Gospel passage, Jesus told the crowds of the challenges they will face if they choose to follow Him. However, Jesus also shared with them the story of the person who wanted to build a tower, and also the tale of the king thinking of launching an attack on the enemy. Basically, He was asking, would a person start building a tower he knows that he cannot complete? Or would a king battle an enemy who has a much stronger army? Through the two stories, Jesus reminds us that we should know our limitations and capabilities, that we should be grounded on reality and know where we stand with the Lord. He's advising us against recklessness in making decisions and taking actions. And even in the rules of discernment found in the spiritual exercises, St. Ignatius counsels us to weigh the advantages and disadvantages of each option carefully and consider which alternative is more reasonable. Thus, he is advising us to be prudent and also for us to approach discernment through the use of reason. My dear friends, when you make decisions rashly and act recklessly, you are not placing faith in the Lord, rather you are testing Him. So in whatever we do, we should proceed not with the attitude of a forlorn hope, but with prudence, an awareness of our strengths and limitations, and hope in the Lord. Mm -hmm.